Just, just, just look, just, just, just put them in the wardrobe, all right? And what's it gonna hurt? Then if you need them, you got them, all right? And then I gotta have a conversation with that wardrobe assistant, and man, she's a bitch. I just don't. Right, please, look, I, look, Randy, I, I'm asking you to help me out, man. If the, if the answer is no, the, the answer is no. Not, not no with excuses. Okay, yeah, the mic's on. Okay. <laughs> I, had I, think, I, I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are back in front of the camera again. <laughs> I say we go for another six hours talking about this movie. I probably well, could, could if it was like every single movie that Tarantino's done, I could. Probably. I could probably go for about six hours talking about this movie. This movie? Oh, like, yeah. I, I don't mm-hmm. know. That's a little long. Um, well, maybe, but... I guess it's maybe But think hours. of the watch time. Yeah. I think it would get kind of boring and repetitive, though. <laughs> it just turns into we just start reenacting the movie, which is definitely... <laughs> it's going to boost up this show's effects budget by, by far and away. Who's DiCaprio and who's Brad Pitt? <laughs> I'm Bruce Dern. Uh, <laughs> Actually, no. I'm Polanski. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Sharon Tate. <laughs> yeah, see? Um, you're shorter than, you know. Than, well, I'm, probably, I'm maybe about yeah. Polanski's height. Yeah. I'm 5'5". Five five. Uh, he's even maybe that, maybe actually a little bit shorter. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. But hey, uh, everyone. Oh, well, hell. Uh, oh, we, we might as well go ahead and uh, and show this. There's a lot of movies based on internet characters. This one happens to be another one. Probably could have just said that. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, it's actually really, really cool having uh, our movie out the same weekend as the Tarantino movie. (laughs) So this has been... (laughs) Actually, a really, really awesome day. Yeah, uh, it's been great. Yeah, it has. Uh, our we did a giant six-hour live stream last night that ended up uh, leading up to uh, the midnight release of our movie. So our, our movie came out midnight this morning, and so far it's been the most successful first day we've had for any of our movies so like you know jesus bro Mm -hmm. the cinema snob movie the other movies we've done and we're extremely grateful yeah (laughs) thank you yeah we are extremely grateful we're flattered with all the kind words we've been receiving we're glad the response has been really good we're glad so many people are are watching the movie because the movie, another cinema snob movie, it was a dream to make it. It was a dream to make it with the cast that we have, with uh, Lloyd the, the cr- with Lloyd Kaufman, yeah. with the crew that we have too, uh, a lot of whom we also work with on Jesus Bro, and it was just a wonderful experience, and the movie turned out so good and so funny and so well made. Like, we really put our hearts into it, and to see how many people have been have been watching it like by far and away more than anyone has in the first day of our movie being (laughs) being released uh that's been really really cool yeah Uh, we've been kind of i mean i guess we had to watch this movie but that's kind of celebrating once upon a time in hollywood yeah yeah we've just been having like a really fun day just we have finally it's not i mean it was a fun ride but you know it's like it's over it's you know, no more editing yeah. Ryan, no more of us, like, you know, promoting it. Or oh, I'll still be promoting it Or, you it know what I mean. Yeah, I'm still yeah. planning on doing more streams. Uh, I'll probably, because I did, I did a Facebook Live Q&A when we released Jesus Bro, and I'll probably do that tomorrow. Oh, right. Um, I, uh, I and so, if you want to watch the movie, it's both, you can purchase it, you, you can buy it on both, uh, it's available on both Vimeo On Demand as well as uh, DVD as well. We got the DVD right here. The DVD, if you just go to, uh, right there, if you just go right underneath Clown Tamra and Surprised Me, (laughs) um, you can get it at (laughs) cinemasnobmovie.com where you can get the DVD and you can also watch it Vimeo on demand as well. And if you get the DVD, you also get four commentary four commentary tracks on it there's one with me and ryan there's one with tamara and doug and rob there's one with ryan and michael Schicciano who did our music there's uh one with Corey goodwin and ray who are also in the movie so 
cool stuff on the DVD as well. But, you know, if, uh, if you don't want the wait time from ordering the DVD, you can also purchase it on On Demand. And uh, I'll put up a clip and a trailer later on, too, because we'll, be we'll still be promoting this movie a lot. Because as great as the response has been so far, it's like, I still want to talk about it. I still want to promote it and everything. It's it's it was just such a great project to work on and then watch the completed film and have so many people also finally see the movie um maybe i could just talk six hours about this but wait i actually did that last night we've done that quite a bit wait, i already did that i did that uh i did that last night we'll be doing some more live streams as well we just got one movie tonight uh let me put up the poster for that we got the new quentin tarantino movie once upon a time in hollywood and i was uh Keeping an eye, I remember keeping an eye on the chat last night, just to like try to avoid spoilers or anything from it. Like I could see the title in a few spots and was like, okay, I'm gonna kind of look away from that. I wanna, I don't wanna see anything on this movie until we go see it this <laughs> afternoon. So. Let me put up the sus subscription thing real quick. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Stone Gremlin Productions. You can also follow us on Instagram as well. You can follow us on Facebook and Tumblr. And let me go ahead and throw up uh, another clip of, Once Upon a of Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And we'll be back right after that to take a look. Once I find the clip, there it is. Okay, we'll be back here in just a second. My hands are registered as lethal weapons. We get into a fight, I accidentally kill you. I go to jail. Anybody accidentally kills anybody in a fight, they go to jail. It's called manslaughter. And like always, we'll be doing the super chat questions too. Uh, after after the review, we always answer your super chat questions, read the super chat comments, and everything. We just got one movie tonight, so we'll be doing that after the review. When we did the uh, uh, the live stream last night, um, a few days prior, uh, or like a week prior, or something. I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to go to a movie on Thursday since we're going to be doing that. So I'm like, I, I hope it's something coming out that I, I don't really want to see or something like that. And then I see Once Upon a Time yeah. in Hollywood. I'm like, man! <laughs> We've been looking forward to this one for a while. This has been the number one movie that I've been looking forward to this year is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So I'm like, oh, maybe there's an early afternoon show. <laughs> There, well, there was the earliest one was at four yesterday, and it's yeah. a long movie, so I'm like, well, I don't have time to go see it at four and then be back here at six yeah, to, uh, to see the movie. I don't like one o'clock showings, cause it usually, especially when they're long movies, because they really eat up your daytime. Uh-huh. Because this movie, total might have been like three hours and was, ten minutes. It was maybe? two hours and 40 minutes, add on top of that 20 yeah, minutes of trailers. So like, yeah, three hours and five, uh, like... 10 minutes maybe and when it's a movie that you're really 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 looking forward to uh the 20 minutes of trailers feels like about 40 minutes yeah well there's some new trailers <laughs> at least i haven't seen there's one that was called like jojo rabbit yeah or something i was like what mm. is this yeah i was in the bathroom <laughs> when that was on but it's okay i made it back just in time to see the good boys trailer for the 80th i time. know i'm so sick of that trailer <laughs> i'm kind of like is this gonna be good or the not? movie might be fine i'm just sick of like seeing the trailer i know i can't tell everything. if it's just gonna be like oh it's cute <laughs> they're saying bad words because they're like live oh, action south park yeah um so this is the movie uh that it's Quentin Tarantino's 1969. Um, <laughs> That's all you is, need to know. <laughs> yeah, this is Quentin Tarantino doing 1969, doing like this old school, like Robert Redford, Paul Newman movie, but revolving around Hollywood in that era. And giving it a title like that, which itself is, you know, a reference to things like Once Upon a Time in the West or Once Upon a Time in America, a title like that certainly would give a movie a sense of like gravitas <laughs> or that it's like maybe a big ensemble or that there there's heavy weight to the movie that you're about to see that definitely is the case here because what you're seeing for a, a majority of this movie i would say for at, le well, at least like the two-thirds is really just it's a couple of days in the lives of 
these people who live in Hollywood that are at various different stages in their career. This movie is a two hour and 40 minute movie and it is one movie where I sat there. I would have been cool with this being a five hour long movie. Yeah. It was a movie. I didn't want this movie to end. I didn't want this world to end. I was surprised when it ended. Like I felt like something more was going to happen and also I didn't feel like it was two hours and 45 minutes. It go- yeah. It's it's a good, it's a quick, and the best Tarantino movies are, are like that. Pulp Fiction never felt like two and a half hours. No, not to me. at all. Jackie Brown doesn't feel like two and a half hours to me. That's what I still need to see. Uh, th- that's my favorite one. Is uh, is Jackie Brown? But um, so what? The characters that you're introduced to in this movie, you say, and, and it's what you see in the trailer. And I, I really do want to avoid a, a lot of spoilers here. It's best if you just look at the trailer and just go into this movie. And what you're seeing is uh, that. Leonardo DiCaprio is playing this television star who was kind of at the height of his career in the 50s and early 60s where he did this kind of gun smoke type show, this TV western in which he was a celebrity and he was a star and then he decided and his friend and kind of companion throughout all these years is his stunt double named Cliff Booth played by uh, Brad Pitt. Um, What a cool name. (laughs) <laughs> Rick Dalton is uh is uh Leonardo DiCaprio's name in the movie. That's a cool freaking yeah, name. Yeah, those too. are definitely Hollywood names. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh where he's at in his career, and you can tell this is written from somebody who kinda at least knows a transition that some actors mm-hmm. were making at the time, in which Leonardo DiCaprio is playing a guy who was a star known for television, tried breaking into movies, it didn't quite work out, and now he's doing guest spots on a lot of different shows, and, um, they do, there's a great scene near the beginning where it's DiCaprio talking with Al Pacino, through the use of their conversation, and the use of different clips from the different shows and movies that that Rick Dalton has done, you kind of see his entire career in your head. Yeah, within, within just a lot of show, don't tell. They just basically kind of show, like, show his career. He, while in the midst of having this conversation yeah. with this character played by Al Pacino. And so you, you see all of these stages. And one thing that Pacino is suggesting that he does is to go to Rome to star in, you know, some spaghetti westerns or some Polizia movies Mm -hmm. or things like that, which is a thing that a lot of actors did back then. Was it kind of frowned upon or something? Well... Because I didn't know that. You would... uh, I mean, there were a lot... There were actors at the time who would go to Italy and still be kind of A-list status there. Like, Mm -hmm. they could be leads in major pictures over there, whether it's, you know, some... Whether it's like, you know, like a cop film or something like that, or a spaghetti western, certainly, um, or s- some different crime movies. You saw the, uh, Fred Williamson did that, went to Italy, did a number of, like, did some post-apocalyptic movies and things like that that he would star in and would be treated like, like A-list over there. Uh, that, that, was kind of the, that was kind of the case with actors who were sort of at the career point that the character of Rick Dalton is in in this movie. And they mimic that really well when it shows him, when it shows him going to, uh, oh, what did I, oh, I, yeah. I, I meant to pull up the, uh, oh, oh no, I think I got it. Uh, yeah. So I they, they mimic all of these, these posters for these Italian movies that he did over there like this, this like kind of knock off James Bond spy thriller, these different spaghetti westerns he was doing, and Al Pacino is certainly breaking it down to him that one thing that here in the States they're doing to him to elevate newer leading people on television is to have like kind of former stars like him show up as a guest spot and then they're defeated by this kind of younger, newer sort of talent mm-hmm. that they have as a means to sort of elevate their their career. So you're seeing him kind of come to grips with dealing with being a has-been, sort of, or potentially that's the case, and he he doesn't want to go to Rome to do these kind of lower-budget movies, but might have to. But meanwhile, he's next door, he lives next door to Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski. (laughs) Her, this beautiful up-and-coming actress, Mm -hmm. 
Polanski certainly big at the time between Rosemary's Baby mm-hmm. and the, the movies he did in the 1960s. So it's these people that live next door to each other at wildly different points in their mm-hmm. career. And what Tarantino does so well in this movie is to really create this world. This isn't like sitting there watching um, like a throwback type thing where it feels like some... It's coming across like it's made in the present, but it's supposed. You see that a lot with a lot of eighties throwbacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where it's like this. Remember feel- this or something. Or I mean, nostalgic. in this, there's certainly a lot of movie posters, the music, of course, but that's what it and television. Looked like the way it's yeah, the way it's integrated into this movie is you expect that in a movie that's taking place in Hollywood, especially in the movie scene, and. It's worked into these these scenes. He is creating this. He's creating the ni- 1969 in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's shot like that. It's uh. It feels like something that came out 50 years ago. I love when they show the fake movies that DiCaprio is in. I do too. And it looks like a movie that was in like the early mid 60s. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's got the vibe of it. it has, it's like, got the, the same, feel of it. Yeah. I love that. The the acting, the is, acting. is delivered in the same way. Um and. There were little things about it that I really liked. Where, yeah, it certainly has a big soundtrack. There's a lot of driving scenes in it, and those are shot really cool. Where you see all of these big windy roads around those Hollywood hills. Mm -hmm. And just these people kind of just carefree speeding through them. Mm -hmm. And it the the movie looks like looking at a time machine. It does. Like how it's It's completely recreated in this film. And... Certainly, there's a great soundtrack in it, and they do a great use with music, which Tarantino also always does. But I also liked how they incorporate incorporated in radio ads. Like, they'd be in the car, yeah, and maybe a song wouldn't be playing. Maybe it would just be a commercial. Maybe it would just be an ad for, like, The Illustrated Man or something like that. That was a really nice touch. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not only are you... Is he heavily getting into these characters and and their attitudes here, what their life is like, kind of how they're unaware of a lot of the world around them. Certainly, they're all kind of living in this moment, but how he builds this world is is amazing. Uh, like I could have spent just way more time going to just in this universe, in this film. Uh, I was entertained by it from beginning to end. Well, it also helps, you know. You know, that the characters are so likable. They're uh-huh. very likable. Like, Brad Pitt's character, especially for me, I liked a lot. Yeah. Um, he's cool. Uh, yeah, he's really cool. I feel like I haven't seen this kind of Brad Pitt in a while. Uh-huh. Maybe I, just I love Brad Pitt, man. I, maybe I haven't seen a lot of Brad Pitt movies in a while. The ones I can remember are kind of more action-y, I guess. Sure. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. No, but, no, no. I mean, you know, he, he looks still does good in this movie. Movies. Yeah, he's got a real Redford vibe to him in this. Yeah. You can tell that's the kind of chemistry they're going for here is like a Newman Redford sort of uh, collaboration, and it shows you different through the use of some flashbacks and also through the use of storytelling what what you know these people's lives were like years in the past, and with Brad Pitt's character, it shows it shows why his career is kind of on a slump too. And he's still trying to get stunt work through Leonardo DiCaprio in the film. There's but like a some, controversy of something. Yeah, kind. something happened in the past and Brad Pitt's kind of thinking to himself about it. And there's a flashback that kind of shows these events that led up to him kind of being ostracized by a bunch of people. We it don't cuts know if it's true or him. not, though. Yeah, it, it cuts back to him and he's like, well, fair enough. <laughs> like, <laughs> there, There's a really funny flashback scene with Bruce With him Lee. and Bruce Lee. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, that was pretty shitty. Fair enough. If I don't get hired that much anymore. <laughs> that was, that was a great scene. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it was. And it was all about building up these characters. I like how much time we spent on the movie sets in this film, on the TV sets. Because uh, really the first two-thirds of this is just a couple of days. And one of those days is... Well, it's sp- it goes to six months later, too. In the second, in the, yeah. in the okay, last, sorry, in the the last act of the movie. No, yeah. no, just about the first two-thirds. Uh, or first three-fourths, maybe. But uh, before then, you there's this whole day that's spent with 
DiCaprio with a Rick Dalton on set for this TV Western and it's showing that, you know, yeah, there's a lot of waiting around. There's a lot of <laughs> yeah. mingling with the other actors, keeping to yourself and him still trying to really give a performance here. The Rick Dalton character yeah. in this kind of one-off guest spot that he has on mm-hmm. this on this television show. And meanwhile, it's showing Sharon Tate who's just kind of going through Hollywood and uh, happens upon a, a She's movie. She's so cute. Yeah, it happens <laughs> upon a, a movie theater showing uh, uh, Wrecking Crew, the, the Dean Martin movie. They have her look so much like Sharon Tate in this movie that when it's showing Wrecking Crew, it was just the movie and it and it worked. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they were... I was like, is that... Really, her? I think that's the real movie because I couldn't tell really. Because uh-huh. I'm like, they wouldn't put the real movie in there, would they? But they didn't. It, 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 it works wasn't really distracting film. at all. No, it wasn't because she looks so much like her. And while there's all of this stuff going on, oops, <laughs> all this stuff going on with these people, again at various stages in their life and career, all kind of focused in on just this moment in time in 1969. When you know what the movie is revolving around, there is this kind of aura of like a sense of like impending doom for well, yeah, some of these it's people. In the trailer, yeah, you know, Manson. you know that like this also revolves around the Manson family. You see in the trailer Brad Pitt on that ranch mm-hmm. with a lot of the different Manson family members. Um, Lena Dunham is she's part of one of them. Yeah, <laughs> she had and, more lines than I thought she would. <laughs> um, and so uh, when with that in your head as you're watching it and really kind of wondering how they're gonna deal with that. It was it was cool what they were doing here, where it's like here are these people, you know, dealing with their career, being either happy or sad about their career. But there is this doom in the future mm-hmm. that, as an audience, you're waiting for. And when it was that scene in the movie where Sharon Tate has premonitions, no, that's a <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get into that movie in a second. But like, uh, it totally should have gone in that direction. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, so I'm getting I'm getting that we we reviewed this movie months ago called The Haunting of Sharon Tate. I'm, I'm gonna come back to that in a minute, but like uh, sorry, I no no no, it's off. fine. I was, I've been waiting to like when she's <laughs> talk about when that. she is uh watching herself in the movie mm-hmm. and really reacting along with the audience yeah. or laughing. And at we the see film a lot of her feet comedy. too. Yeah, there is that. There is that trademark in there. Um, <laughs> it was also a really heartbreaking scene too. Why? When you know what happened to this person in real life, oh, and you yeah, see her is... watching it and full of life yeah, and, up and coming. laughing with the audience mm-hmm. in the theater and getting a lot of joy out of it, it was genuinely sad. Um, yeah. Now, what this movie does way better than The Haunting of Sharon Tate. <laughs> Because we reviewed, the, there was this movie that came out, I, I don't know if you saw our review of this, there was a movie that came out some months ago where Hilary Duff played Sharon Tate, and, <laughs> and it was about her, it, it was them doing a movie out of Sharon Tate having premonitions of her own fate and making it like this paranormal horror film, but it was so... <laughs> It was it was one of those movies where the the, the actors are, the characters are constantly having lines that you w- that you write when you're not really that good of a writer and it's the characters are saying things like we are all masters of our own fate uh, like the yeah. kind of fake talk you give characters when <laughs> the writer knows how this story ends fortune cookie writing yeah <laughs> it, it, it was a lot of that and we even said in that review it's like it's not that you can't do like a spin like off a, of a tragedy like that. Kind of yeah, it, it happens all the time. Like you totally can. Quentin, you just got to have the talent to back it up. Quentin Tarantino did that with Inglorious Bastards. Sure, yeah. like uh, you know, and I, I I've seen different movies that did like a take off of the Manson family thing, and then some did it fine, and some were bad. It's just all about the the writing and the execution, the style, the acting, and everything. This. Uh, I, I don't want to get... I, I really don't want to get into any spoilers on no. this movie. But um, this movie, unlike 
that one. <laughs> when that movie, when The Haunting of Sharon Tate came to its conclusion, I remember thinking, like, it's not that I don't see what you're going for here. It's just executed <laughs> in this really film schooly <laughs> kind of way. Yeah. This, it gets brutal at the end. Without saying what happens, like, it gets brutal. Uh, but when it comes to its conclusion, there was something genuinely sweet about it. Yeah, totally. Um, and again, it just made me want to see more of this. Yeah, I did Um, too. It is, I think it's his best movie since Jackie Brown. Really? Yeah. Um. I have to think of the order first of his movies. Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown... Kill Bill, uh, Inglorious Bastard or Death Proof, and then Inglorious Bastards, uh, yeah. and Django. Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight. You know, I think uh, you're right. I would say it was too. I, it was, my favorite so one is four rooms in there somewhere. <laughs> my favorite is uh, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, and then I need to see Jackie Brown, but Jackie Brown's my favorite. This was him. This was also easily his most mature film since Jackie Brown. It is. It's, there isn't that much gore in it, but there is one scene where there is. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it, <laughs> there's not much throughout the film. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very character-based. Uh, Which all of his movies are, but... I was, yeah, the, I wasn't saying... This one... Really no, I, I know. Uh, this one, though... Yeah, I mean, Tarantino, he's a master of character. He's a master of dialogue. Uh, I, I liked, I, I really liked Inglorious Bastards. I liked Django a lot. I wasn't really that much into Hateful Eight, but it, it does have moments of greatness in it. Um, this, it feels more akin to his works like Jackie Brown or even Pulp Fiction. I was thinking of or Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, where it's less of a genre movie, like, uh, Inglorious Bastards or Django, uh, and more really about creating what looks like this livable world, yeah. this 1969 universe right here, versus, because uh, all of Tarantino's movies are a love letter, this one certainly to filmmaking, this one certainly to the 1960s and 1960s television. It, it feels more uh, grounded in its universe, like Jackie Brown, versus uh, a spaghetti western love letter like uh, uh, Django. Django. There's or... a little bit of spaghetti western. Well, yeah, when they're actually making the movie. Oh. Like, uh, <laughs> when it, yeah, in this, when they're making the fake movies in the movie. Yeah, oh, certainly. Yeah, even this movie, when there's the fake movies, yeah, he's showing his love for, like, you know, World War II exploitation movies, the Italian exploitation flicks. But it's all in this universe where these are the movies that this guy is making. This is kind of where he's at in his career. It made it feel more like a universe like Jackie Brown versus... Uh, the tone of something like Django Unchained. Um, the only thing that really kind of took me out of it was uh, in the last quarter when suddenly there was a narration. Um, I didn't really... Who was narrating? Kurt Russell. Okay, I was. I thought the narration was kind of unnecessary. I did too. Because like, they did do it a little bit in the beginning. Like once. They did it once, and I was like, oh, is this going to be a thing in the movie? Mm-hmm. And then they did it again when it was the six months later, and then it stopped again. It didn't really need... That was also something that he did, and I think, in Hateful Eight, where randomly it was like, I think, Tarantino himself narrating it. His they, voice I, isn't that pleasant. I, I, wouldn't want, <laughs> I wouldn't really want him narrating. I think I think it was Hateful Eight that that happened in. Uh, but in this... That part, I was kind of like, okay, like this is kind of sudden, and you don't really <laughs> need this. I, I, I kind of get what's going on here. Aside from that, though, um, I, I want to see this movie again. I would, like, too, for someone that likes movies in the 1960s, late 60s. Yeah. Mm Because I love, just alone that this was, uh, like, late 60s and 70s, those are, like, my favorite times of this, um, of Uh the century. 
Uh, we were even watching 70s Oh, yeah, Match, Match game. game was on. We have, the, we, have the, we have the game show network on a lot. And the and 70s Match Game comes on usually like around 9 a.m., yeah. I think. And mm-hmm. it's always this porn music playing oh, yeah. and someone's smoking a pipe. And it's just this orange background. I love the 70s. You, you throw in uh, 70s Game Show and Richard Dawson and uh, Charles Nelson Riley in there. You throw me in there. That's that's my afternoon right there. It's my cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it kind of is. Porno music from 70s Game Shows. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I love Match Game. I don't um, think Tarantino made an appearance in this one. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like... I I wouldn't put it past like maybe his hand is in it somewhere, <laughs> or, uh, or or something like that. Um, this, the dog from Stuber was. <laughs> is that the same dog? No, that oh. looks like the same exact dog. I love though. that dog. Well, yeah. That dog was just watching Brad Pitt make his food and everything and little reactions. That, that dog was, was badass in this movie. Yeah, yeah, man. This There's some goes badass to town. stuff in this movie. Brad Pitt does some shit in this movie. That's hardcore. <laughs> he's hardcore. He's really, he's badass in this. And there is that scene, like, it's in the trailer where he takes off his shirt. Yeah, he, yeah. Like, he does look good. I mean, uh-huh. how old is he now? He's in his 50s. Um, like, early 50s? Early, mid 50s, I think. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got it. Like, yeah, there he is. <laughs> Looking all cos- Redford. <laughs> you should cosplay as him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I could, I could cosplay as Polanski. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? How would you even do that? Who are you? I'm Roman Polanski. Don't you see it? <laughs> I want. I will do this. <laughs> it's Halloween. You? I will wear like '60s Polanski oh, garb God. like people he think... had in this movie. There's a lot of people that don't like Roman Polanski, so I want to do that. People really? Are gonna... <laughs> 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 I would. I would do it. <laughs> I'm Polanski. Like, I'm Polanski, guys. Check out my, like, ascot. It's like Joey from Friends. He's like, I'm Chandler with the sweater vest. <laughs> oh, <vests."> yeah. <laughs> I'm Chandler. <laughs> I don't... That is so you. <laughs> Anyways, off topic. No, no. It's fine. Yeah, I, I, I want to see this movie again. Yeah, I would too. I loved every second of this movie. I, I This is on my top three easily. i would say of his easily movies. It is. yeah i was going into this i was like i don't want to be disappointed i don't want to be disappointed yeah. like don't break my heart with this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah like reservoir dogs pulp fiction and then yeah. this one i would we'll say have a jackie brown day sometime yeah i really need to see that one because kill bill i couldn't get into as much um the, uh, glorious bastards kill bill I liked, one but... i like a lot uh two parts um, you saying Glorious Bastards? Yeah, I saw that. I thought it was good. I liked the idea of it, uh, but some of it I felt like ran a little too long. But sure. uh, with this movie, I don't like long movies, <laughs> and well, I think some people know that. And mm-hmm. this movie didn't feel like two hours and forty five minutes, and it felt enjoy uh, it's, entertaining the whole time. It's great, even like the really smaller walk ons you see in this, and how. They really have the mannerisms and look of some of these people down. Like, like Margot Robbie. Well, her, yeah. And also, the guy playing Bruce Lee. But there's a scene in this movie that's taking place at the Playboy Mansion. And right away, you see one girl is supposed to be Mama Cass, I believe. And Damian Lewis plays Steve McQueen in this. Mm-hmm. The way they have him look in this movie is spot on to Was to he Steve the one McQueen. that was like, let me tell you a story. That she, person. That was Steve the, McQueen? Yeah. Oh, I was, I was like, was that still supposed to be Steve McQueen? Yeah. I wasn't sure. Damian Lewis yeah. plays Steve McQueen yeah, in Yeah, he got scene. it down. Yeah, the look was down, the hair that they had like him in the there. Like the eyes, the way he gazed. Like, <laughs> he, he had that Steve McQueen stare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which Damian Lewis kind of has that as an actor anyway. <laughs> like, But, like, yeah, they they really did. The, the actor playing uh, <laughs> Polanski. Yeah, um, he didn't talk too much, and he wasn't in it that much either. No, but he was I dancing mean, and maybe had like one line. He's but, got a line. He's got a couple lines later on, but even from the trailer when he walked on, I was like, "Oh, that's Roman Polanski." Uh, yeah, and, you can tell he has yeah. a pretty distinct look. Yeah, and uh, um, 
the guy playing Manson, who's not in the movie very much, but... No, not really at all. I think he's only in it for one scene. Um, yeah, and they they make the most a lot out of a lot of really small roles like this, whether it's Bruce Lee, whether it's Damian Lewis and Steve McQueen. Him walking on, he was really good. He had the voice, he had the voice for it down, he had a look down, and Bruce Dern is in it for one scene as a dude who owns the ranch that they that they live on yeah uh, you know who i really liked and i forgot to mention um the hippie girl with the dark brown oh hair. she was good yeah, yeah she was really good she was like uh oh, do you want me to suck your cock while you're driving and he's like how old are you <laughs> i'm gonna need to see some identification <laughs> <laughs> that was funny she was really cute in that movie she yeah cute. yeah there's a lot of little gray scenes in the, in this movie i uh this will it's one of those movies like Lost City of Zed for me, where I'm wrapped up in this world, the universe they've created here, what they're doing with the characters, the storytelling, the music, certainly. That, it's a movie that I watch, and I'm just shown how much I love movies, how much I love filmmaking, mm -hmm. and the craft that goes into a movie like this, and Lost City of Zed, and movies like that, it's... Um, I cherish when I have that feeling going to going to movies, and this certainly gave me that. Like I mm. easily, this is going to be on my best my best list at the end of the year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I same. I should have put Lost City of Zed at number one that year, but it was out earlier in the year, and I had kind of. It's not that I forgot about it, but like uh, there was just some stuff that I kind of recently seen, and now I'm like, yeah, that. I, I, I probably really should have put that as number one. <laughs> um, but no, the, yeah, the, this, I'll definitely be talking about at the end of the year. I, I hope I have some time coming up where I can where I can check this movie out again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shoot because uh, I still want to promote, <laughs> I still want to promote the hell out of our movie too. So I'm going to throw up a, uh, I'm going to throw up a little clip here, and if you've been following along with our movie and everything, it'll be a clip that you've, you've most likely seen before, but it's a minute long. <laughs> and then we'll uh, answer, like, Super Chats, I guess. Yeah, then we'll answer the, uh, if, if there's anything going on in the Super Chat. There was one, I think, I saw. Cool. So, yeah, we can do that, <laughs> cool. and then we'll be back, uh, <laughs> and then we'll be back and wrap things up, and I'll show the trailer, uh, for our movie again. So, here's a clip where we, fir where Tamara and I first end up in the uh um the the clown the clown museum where it looks like some sinister things might start happening so we'll be right back after this make yourselves at home i'm gonna go check on them Sweet home. <laughs> Look at these clown mannequins. They're so lifelike. So much backstory, such inner turmoil. <laughs> I wonder what happened to them to make them life's court jesters. These are real fucking people. <laughs> oh, God. I see we have a pair of guests. Mistake, mistake, mistake! And it is. What are you doing? You've been like, caught red handed. I was of Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We I'm going to community college. <laughs> um. <laughs> he didn't even know they were taking a photo of him. He just looks like that sometimes. <laughs> it's his publicity photo. Um, so yes, you can order. Uh, you can order and watch another Cinema Snob movie now. You can order it on DVD at cinemasnobmovie.com, and also there, if you want to see it sooner than ordering the DVD, you can also purchase it on uh, Vimeo on demand. So that's at cinemasnobmovie.com. Got a couple here in uh, the super chat to get to. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching, and thanks for the contributions as well. Mr. Movie Central One, can't wait to see the movie, both yours and Tarantino's. Mm -hmm. um, I like that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so The Intruder came out in the UK, and I haven't laughed that hard at a bad movie in ages. Oh. <laughs> um, 
were you with me at that? No, I wanted okay. to though. I don't know Shouldn't why I wasn't there. At all, man. I wish. I think I was big. tired or something, and you had like it three was, movies in a row. Or, I did. I had yeah. like three movies that night. One of them was Ugly Dolls, I think. And, yeah, I think it was one um, of the last movies of the night. So I was like, I don't want to sit through Ugly Dolls so I can watch The Intruder. Oh, you should have. It would have. It would have. <laughs> it would have been worth it. Uh, so yeah, The Intruder. Yeah, seeing The Intruder in ninety minutes, Dennis Quaid just going over the top and being crazy. And it was very, very entertaining. <laughs> um, there's some... Corey was uh, texting me yesterday. There's some movie out. I don't know if Springfield will get it. But I think it's called, like, See You Soon or something like that. That looks like a YA romance. Like, something like that after movie uh. we went to go see. And uh, I think that's what it's called. Um, I, I, look, I hadn't heard of it, but I looked into it. And I'm like... I that comes to Springfield. Oh man, that looks like yeah, that looks like something to be like entertaining to see. You're say that looks like something you will totally like. Oh, that looks like something you will so be into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get to the other one that we have here. Uh, Linus Anderson, Brad, in your episode of Galaxy Invader way back in 2008. So you've been watching a while. Thank you. Uh, you said at the end you'll get to review Track of the Moon Beast next. Well, it's been 11 years and I'm still waiting. That is actually, that is honestly a really, really good question. Uh, I forgot that I mentioned that at the end of that episode, but I mean, I barely remember what I say in episodes a few episodes ago. <laughs> so I actually did write a uh, episode at the time for Track of the Moon Beast. I, pro- I might have had it written when I referenced it in... Uh, um, when I referenced it in that episode, uh, cause I had, it was on one of my hundred movie packs and I had watched it. And back then the episodes of the snob were written more linear, uh, or not linear, uh, uh non-linear. Uh, so it, the episodes weren't as long back then as they, they are now because, uh, at the time you couldn't go over 10 minutes on, on YouTube. I wrote it and hadn't either forgot no i wouldn't have forgot it just would have been an episode that i didn't see i i didn't realize at the time that it was uh, a, a mystery science theater episode because i think at the time there was still like a handful of the sci-fi channel ones that i hadn't seen so when i saw that i was like oh well mystery science theater did it so uh okay i'll, I'll do something else instead so that was that was why I never did the Track of the Moon Beast episode. But now, uh, I, I did one on Pod People years ago. Maybe I should go ahead and do Track of the Moon Beast, maybe. Um, especially since apparently I referenced it 11 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this, is a quest- uh-huh. this is a question for Lauren. Uh-huh. <laughs> who is she I used to get that a lot yeah. uh, people calling me Lauren Destiny C says curious what Lauren's job is uh, I take care of kids and um, which is really nice and flexible for me especially yeah. since I'm planning on going back to school to finish my or since I have my associates I'd like to take more classes again mm. so it's a nice a part time job for when I go back to school in the spring so uh when they ask what I do for a living, do you, do you say, oh, he watches porn? <laughs> uh, maybe to strangers just to freak them out. But, um, do what? Maybe I would to strangers just to oh. freak them out. But uh, <laughs> No, I just say, when it's someone older, I just kind of say he's a content creator or movie mm-hmm. reviewer. Mm-hmm. But um, when it's someone younger, I will mention, like, oh, he does movie reviews on YouTube or makes mm-hmm. videos and mo- movies and stuff. <laughs> He has a cartoon cat and uh, <laughs> does live streams in front of old VHSs. The dream. <laughs> so I mean, it okay. kind of is. Some people would love No, it. yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Oh, God. I, I remember the jobs I had when I was in my 20s before I started doing this for a living. Hell yes, this is the dream. Oh, God, yeah. I want to be driving, uh, you know, meds for Osco Drugs still. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I was a DJ for four years, so that was fun. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, I, w- I never took care of kids, though. <laughs> yeah, you don't really have that touch. Like, oh, that sounds weird. Maybe. I should hope not! <laughs> <laughs> that paternal uh, yeah. 
instinct, I guess. I could take care of cats. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we'll go you ahead and leave. treat our cats like kids. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I treat them like kings. Um, all right, we're going to leave you with a trailer for another Cinema Snob movie. And so order another <laughs> Cinema Snob movie. That's at cinemasnobmovie.com where you can get uh, the DVD or you can do the digi- the Vimeo on-demand uh, digital download. That's all over at cinemasnobmovie.com. And I forget what next week's movies are. I'm pretty sure it's more than just one movie. Uh, but uh, we'll be back on uh, Friday with some more uh with some more reviews and i'll probably do like a facebook live thing uh tomorrow night talking more about the movie so we'll see you guys then and let me pop up or yeah there's our trailer right, right. have a great night Bye. see you guys oh my god the cinema snob i just have to say that you're why i started content creating in the first place harump you should be more interested in real troll critics like armand white thank you very much <laughs> I do not get that reference, but the way you said it really made me laugh. Our guest today is amateur filmmaker and YouTuber Craig Golightly. So tell me, what's your movie about? The Cinema Snob movie. Is it gonna suck, Craig? What if our movie sucks? We drink. What if it doesn't suck? We drink more to celebrate. Here's the Cinema Snob movie. There will be no peace until that man, the cinema snob, reviews our very own E.T. porno parody. Our careers are ruined, Neil. How could you have possibly thought that that would go over well? Why even go into outer space? Because it's an internet movie. They all go into outer space. I made a movie so bad that I don't know if I can properly make fun of movies anymore. I hate to say it, Craig, but there's only one thing you can do to save your career. We're gonna go fix the relationship with your dad. Craig's dad? What is he gonna do? Get us out of detention? He was a prominent game show producer in the 1970s. I don't see what the big deal is. Just road tripping with a couple of clods we just met. They actually think I'm a cinema snob. They don't know it's just a character. Get off the main road! We're gonna get lost. No one's gotten lost since cell phones have come out. Didn't take long for us to get lost. Not long at all. We need to find some place to stop. Sure, I want a museum down the road. Ball museum? No, clown museum. I miss Cannibal Dad. They're so lifelike. These are real people. Oh, let me guess. You also think Chuckles is a human person and also a serial killer. I have seen enough 70s horror movies to know that the highway sucks and anything you find on the highway will try and kill you. So believe me when I tell you that... that I am surrounded by serial killing clowns. There's a lot of movies based on internet characters. This one happens to be another one. What is with you and sequels? I don't like sequels.